hour, we will be sharing this recording with those um, people who have signed up for the, the land use lunch hour. But um, welcome. This uh, is our second land use lunch hour, and we will be focused on the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments today of Placer County. Um, just to, before we get started, it's it said, oh, hold on. Uh, before we get started, I want to just do a qu quick round of introductions of our staff. My name is Alexis Aller. I'm the Executive Director of Mountain Area Preservation. And Sophia, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Sophia Heydrich and I am the Advocacy Director for Mountain Area Preservation. This is a new program for us. It's our second ever MAP Land Use Lunch Hour, so we're hoping it kind of picks up some steam and, and takes hold here really soon. Um, if it becomes popular, maybe it's something we could even do in person. It's nice to see faces. Uh, but anyway, welcome. We're happy to have you all here and hopefully you learned something new today. Great. So today we are going to be focused on the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments. And um, if you were on our last land use lunch hour in, de in December, we focused on the t TRPA housing code amendments. And yes, there are there is some overlap, but these are two different planning processes and two different sets of uh, zoning and code amendments. So um, we will be focused on what we call the TBAP amendments today. Um, but just real quick, you know, Mountain Area Preservation, we're an environmental advocacy nonprofit. We started in 1987. We have been working for 36 years to not only protect open space with our conservation partners, but advocate for responsible development and sound land use planning. Um, and so big part of our work is doing the organizing and advocacy around policies, around land use planning. And today we're focused on the TBAP amendments. Not only are we gonna talk about the rules um, next for the Zoom, but we will also talk about the uh, what the Placer County Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments are, as well as uh, the amendments by the numbers, uh, what has happened in the public process, our concerns, Mountain Area Preservation's concerns, a call to action at the end of the Zoom, and then of course Q&A, which will be really helpful uh, to anyone who wants to not only ask questions or also bring forward information regarding um, the amendment package. Uh, just as a, as a rule here, we are on Zoom. Um, please hold your questions and answers till the end. Um, please be respectful of other uh, opinions and perspectives with this subject. And again, I've already said this, but we will be recording this and we'll post the Zoom to our website and also share the Zoom with, um, with everyone who registered for the Zoom if they're not able to be online right now. So what is the Tahoe Basin Area Plan? Um, if, if you are familiar with the regional plan that came out of the, the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency in 2012, the next iteration of planning was to have plan areas for the local jurisdictions, the five different counties within the basin. And so for Placer County, the Tahoe Basin Area Plan was a five-year process. And there was about 16 stakeholders in the North Lake Tahoe community. Uh, MAP was invited to be a part of that. At that time, we were in the process of litigating the Martis Valley Community Plan, or not Martis Valley Community Plan, Martis Valley West. Martis Valley Community Plan was before that. <laughs> um, we were uh, litigating the Martis Valley West project. And so we did not have the capacity to be on the Tahoe Basin Area Plan um, working group, but we had many partners and many MAP members who served on that, uh, that cohort, which was a long process to not only define the town center boundaries, but to really <clears throat> discuss and make concessions on appropriate land uses, everything from development to conservation to revitalization. Um, it was a very, very inclusive process for five years. And, um, and when that area plan was approved in 2017, that was the last time there was environmental review for that uh, plan area. Two years ago, Placer County started what we were calling the amendment process, and they started amending the TBAP uh, area plan to really bring forward 
goals to not only streamline new development, but also to incentivize redevelopment and new development. Specifically, some of the incentives are for workforce housing or conversion of tourist accommodations, uh, redevelopment of commercial, and looking at a way to really include more economic drivers within the Tahoe Basin area plan. And so that two-year process started in, uh, I believe it started internally in 2021 and then became public in 2022. And that is when MAP started to uh, attend TBAP hearings, everything from the North Tahoe Regional Advisory Committee to um, the Planning Commission to Board of Supervisors and the amendment package was approved in 2023. All right, and now I'm gonna jump into some of the, the nitty gritty details. So what are the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments? Um, this is a very large package of amendments. So we're dealing with changes um, both to policy and to regulation. In terms of policy, we've got a few of those highlighted here. There's uh, high-speed broadband and childcare facilities. Um, and in terms of policies, it's really incentives to sort of drive these uses. Um, so also policies related to frontage improvements. So you're thinking sidewalks, curbs, gutters, parking, um, sort of the way that North Tahoe looks and feels and functions. Um, also the development of mixed use business park and light industrial space in town centers. Uh, again, you know, um, Alexis mentioned sort of that adaptive reuse or sort of revitalization of town centers. So that's part of this as well. And then also incentives for expanded hardening, green waste, and defensible space. Next slide, please. Uh, some additional policy changes. There are incentives to um, essentially facilitate the creation of more public art redevelop town centers. There's also a policy related to the allocation and conversion of TRPA development rights. Um, and that's really interesting because there are a certain amount of development rights uh, that are allocated by the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. Um, and there's a certain amount for housing, there's a certain amount for commercial, there's a certain amount for sort of different uses and how those are allocated and how those are potentially converted among uses is really kind of a, a key a key portion to me, um, that's something that is going to be further explored in a program down the line. So we're really curious to know if there are ways that Placer County can essentially incentivize the uses that we need, sort of like workforce housing, um, low income, moderate housing, incentivize those, those uses rather than more high end condos, that sort of thing. And then finally, development of affordable, moderate and achievable housing. Next slide, okay. So the regulations, this is really going to change the way that the Tahoe Basin Area Plan is implemented. So this is actually how it functions. Um, so many different regulations. I'm not gonna read through all of these cause it's a lot and I, I apologize for a couple of text heavy slides. I know it's hard to sort of grapple with all of that but you know, the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments deal with everything from food trucks, where can they be located? How does that function? to um, groundwater interception for below grade parking, to parking exemptions, um, to shore zone permitting. So there's just a wide range of regulations. And I think that that's one of the things that makes the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments a little bit harder to digest is that there's so many different things in this package of proposals that that is, um, it's hard to really understand what they all do and what all the implications would actually look like on the ground. So hopefully today at the end of this, um, like I said, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but if there are questions and we wanna dive into something, really happy to get into the nitty gritty, but really wanting to just give everyone sort of a high level overview, what's sort of the breadth of topics that these amendments sort of cover. Next slide. So the ones that we are particularly interested in here at Mountain Area Preservation are the housing requirements. Um, I think particularly because this has the potential to really impact the way that North Lake Tahoe looks and functions and feels. Um, let me go back one more. There we go. 
So in terms of housing, there are amendments to regulations related to removing setback requirements, removing massing requirements, so how big a, a building might be, removing or reducing parking requirements, allowing multifamily projects by right um, for deed-restricted affordable, moderate, or achievable housing. That's one in particular that we have a lot of concerns about because allowing a project by right essentially means that there's no sort of public review process. Um, it goes through an administrative process with staff. And so staff says, okay, does it meet all of these regulations? Check, check, check. Okay, we're moving it forward. But the community doesn't really have the chance to weigh in and say, ooh, we really wish it functioned this way, or we really wish that these um, building materials were more sensitive to this environment or more sensitive to the character of this sort of town center area. So, you know, sort of remo removing that level of oversight kind of removes an opportunity for the community to be a part of the process and really have some buy-in on projects. So that's one that we've, we've really taken a strong look at. Um, also proposals to reduce minimum lot width reducing minimum lot sizes and removing the minimum lot area. So in function, this means that you can have more units in a smaller area. So you might have a building that is a little bit bigger because it's now not having the same setback or massing requirements. And there's just more units within that building itself because they don't have to, the actual units themselves don't have to be a, a certain size. Um, Pros and cons to that, but I think one of the big uh, sort of hangups is that if you put more people in a smaller area and then also change those parking requirements, you're sort of inviting some potential challenges related to just how people are going to actually access these places, especially if there are more people in a smaller area. So those are some of the concerns that we're, we're grappling with right now. Now I'll toss it back over to Alexis to talk about what the process has looked like. So the process has been pretty, pretty quick. And while there was an internal yeah. process, hold on one second, everyone. Yeah. Per personal mail delivery going on here. Um, so the process, like, like we've mentioned, you know, when we became aware of the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments in late 2022, the majority of the interactions and engagement of changing the amendments was with uh, about seven different developer stakeholders. There was not engagement with the original Tahoe Basin Area Plan uh, group, the committee, and the the process really sort of took a, a life of its own. Um, you know, one year of meetings, two years of developing these amendments, with one year of them being developed behind the scenes three public workshops. Um, like I said, the, the the amendments were based on engaging about seven developers is what the planner at Placer County shared with us, Stacy Wydra. And this was really concerning because these are not only did you create a area plan with your community, you now are changing it only with the engagement and influence by, de by seven developers. And that's, that is not inclusive planning and is, is really frowned upon, especially coming out of the regional plan update that had a focus of redevelopment, revitalization, and really bringing forward sort of new integrity of redevelopment within our town centers. Um, there was nine Placer County meetings and about 30 hours of public hearings and 600 plus minutes of public testimony with thousands of pages submitted of public comments, of concerns, everything from uh, housing concerns, the height. At first, when the height came forward, it was a proposal of 71 feet. Then the proposal was 65 feet. Then they said, we're taking height out. I'll let Sophia get to the, she'll, she'll address some of the bait and switch with the housing height issues for deed restricted housing. But it, but it was a slam dunk process. When you think about the severity and the changes for land use and to only really have one year of engagement with not only your residents, your business owners, your stakeholders, um, it has created a, I would say, not only a chaotic public process, but it also then uh, created a lawsuit. There are there are environmental organizations, and I know one organization is on the call who filed a lawsuit after the approval of these amendments. But this graphic just illustrates how quick the process went and how how many 
um, I would say letters of concern and public comments that came forward in that last year. So as Sophie has mentioned, you know, we have a number of concerns and, but we also do have items that we support. We do support focusing and incentivizing redevelopment in town centers. This was the fundamental piece of the regional plan update that everyone could get behind. Redevelopment of our town centers, revitalization, let's not sprawl into undeveloped areas and let's really not only maintain those thresholds, but make those thresholds meaningful, especially with addressing our workforce housing. The other piece is that we, we absolutely support incentives for workforce housing and affordable housing. It's a huge part of our mission, a huge part of our advocacy. We've worked very uh, closely with a number of developers to get those projects and get those units on the ground. So this is not at all coming from a anti-development NIMBY. It's about making meaningful workforce housing to address not only the crisis, but house the workforce that serves this community. Our biggest concerns, though, are the fact that we have an ina inadequate environmental impact report. They put out an addendum and they even put out an errata, which is just sort of a, an, another attachment to an addendum at the final meeting. And when you go through a checklist process and you state that nothing has changed in your community since 2017, and those of us who live here and have lived through the pandemic understand that our community has drastically changed since 2017 and our environment has changed and in a part of doing good environmental analysis is also tuning back into what your mitigation measures are and saying are these working are they being implemented could we do a better job with our mitigation in addressing new land uses so you know we haven't had that done in this process and that is a huge part of the lawsuit by the North Tahoe uh, Preservation Alliance and 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 the cohort of litigants on that. The other piece is building massing, you know, large buildings that consume an entire lot um, is not necessarily appropriate for the Lake Tahoe Basin and the environment. And so we have concerns about what the built environment will look like with these amendments coming forward and how a project could consume an entire parcel and not have a buffer or a setback or even space between two uh, individual units. Uh, another issue and concern is the definition of achievable housing. Um, this is this is a, a, a pattern of a of concerns not only with the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments, but the TRPA Housing Code amendments is also um, not defining an income cap for achievable housing. And so this is this is of concern to us. And then of course, as Sophia mentioned, the multifamily projects by right. Uh, multifamily by right is is concerning because again the placement of massing and scale and high density units doesn't always make sense in certain parcels and if you allow by right and it's an administrative review the community is not going to have an opportunity to take a look at that project or influence a better land use outcome and then of course the final piece is the building height bait and switch um, again, when the process started, when the, when the first public hearing happened in the fall of 2022, the first height that came forward was 71 feet. And, you know, the, the compromise of the Tahoe Basin area plan was 56 feet, uh, from, from 48 feet to 56 feet. So to go from 56 feet to 71 feet is a huge change in development or future development. And then that sort of got whittled back. It went from 71 feet in the fall of 2022 to then uh, 65 feet in the spring of 2023 to back to 56 feet in August of 2023, Placer County saying heights off the table. But anyone who's been tracking the TRPA process understands that now 65 feet for deed restricted housing is the height. So um, confusing and sloppy planning at best, and also a lack of transparency to the community through a one-year public process. Very concerning to us. Uh, as I mentioned, the environmental impact report and the addendum, we believe, is incomplete. They did an environmental checklist, and they did an addendum and concluded that 
there are not significant impacts with these code amendments and changes. And, and while some might not make a significant impact, things such as scenic resources and traffic and population and cumulative impacts specifically with what's changed since 2012 in the regional plan update in 2017 with the Tahoe Basin Area Plan and now being in 2024, our environmental conditions have changed. And, and, and MAP and many environmental groups um, have asked for this to be addressed in a new analysis. And that um, has been, I would say, skirted through not only the addendum, but the errata that was brought up to, at the final hearing. I'm going to pass it to Sophia to talk about achievable housing, because this is not only a new term, but a new concept for the region. So uh, an important reminder is that a lot of these incentives apply to deed restricted, affordable, moderate or achievable housing. And those have different definitions. And we put up this slide just to kind of give you an example. Um, it says Placer County and Douglas County. So you can see that affordable housing in Placer County, that income limit is 82,000. Moderate is 123,000. But there's this new category and that's achievable. And that means that there has to be at least one person in the household who works in the Truckee Tahoe Unified School District for at least 30 hours per week. Um, you know, we understand that there is definitely a need for housing for folks who work in this community and they make more than that moderate income housing um, limit. So they make more than $123,000, but they still can't afford to, to buy a home in this area. And so the intent of this achievable piece is to really hit those folks. Unfortunately, there's also sort of this concern because there's no income cap at all. So as long as someone works here, they can purchase these homes, these deed restricted homes. And that really leaves kind of a wide gap. We can have folks who, you know, we know we have a lot of folks who live in this community and they make a lot of money. Um, and now they're also going to qualify for this deed restricted housing. And we would really like to see an income cap. So saying, hey, we understand that there are folks who make more than $123,000 a year who really could use a leg up and, and access to some of this deed restricted housing, but we don't think that there should be an unlimited amount of income that those folks make. Um, especially because, you know, there's a housing crisis. We keep hearing that over and over, but providing more housing for folks who make, you know, are really high income earners, that's not going to help us solve that crisis. It's not really going to help us meet that missing middle, if you will. Um, so we have advocated and asked for, you know, an income cap on achievable housing. So saying, yes, you, you have to live and work here. Um, but you also can only make a certain amount of money to really qualify for housing that is um, able to utilize these sorts of incentives. All right, we're gonna play this video real quick.
I'm not sure if everyone was able to hear that through your um through your headphones. I I couldn't hear it through mine, but I hopefully you were able to read on the screen what it said. And if you want to go back and actually listen to it, um, we can post the link for that as well. But this was really just a highlight. You know, Alexis mentioned that there has been some confusion about the building height proposal. So we wanted to highlight the fact that there are two public processes going on at the same time. One is in Placer County and one is in the Tahoe Basin with the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. And that has just really created an extra level of confusion for folks um, because they would have similar but not the same impacts. So for the Tahoe Basin Area Plan, Alexis mentioned first the building height proposal was 71 feet in town centers. And then the public came out and said, whoa, 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 71 feet. We negotiated really hard for that 56 feet that we got in the 2017 um, amendments. And so Placer County said, okay, okay, we're going to we're gonna go back down to 65 feet. And then the community came out again and said, whoa, no, 65 feet is still very, very high compared to what we argued for. So Placer County said, okay, okay, we hear you. We're going to take the heights off of, off of the table. We're only going to propose 56 feet because that's what we're hearing from the community. 56 feet is, a, is what was negotiated and what folks really want to see. We're going to keep the heights. And so the community felt pretty good. Like, hey, Placer County heard us. They took the height proposal off the table. Um, you know, we kind of got a win. And then right after all this happened, we learned that the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency is also proposing height increases and that would apply to the same area. So they're actually proposing 50, from 56 feet to 65 feet in town centers in North Lake Tahoe. And so it just felt a little disingenuous. You know, you've got Placer County saying, nope, we hear you, we're taking heights off the table. And then you've got the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency coming back and putting those heights back on the table again. Um, we know that there's a lot of crossover. We know that Cindy Gefsonson, the District 5 um, supervisor for Placer County, also sits on the TRPA governing board. So she's aware that these two things are going on simultaneously. Um, and yet it's sort of played off like, oh, no, that's happening there. That doesn't apply to what we're doing. And it just it doesn't build a whole lot of confidence in the community when you think, OK, I thought that you were hearing us and now we're learning that this is coming back even though we said that that's really not what we wanted. So that's been one of our big concerns this whole time is, you know, why say that you're taking height off the table if it's just coming back through a different process? So finally, kind of a call to action, and then we're gonna open up for questions. I really wanna have um, time for a discussion. Again, this is pretty complicated stuff, and I know we start to speak in our jargony, jargony land use language. So hoping that you can ask questions and we can kind of dissect all of this a little bit. But there are a couple of call to actions. So first, I mentioned that the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency just passed a bunch of housing amendments, including that increase in building height. Placer County does have the opportunity to opt out of those amendments. Um, so one call to action is to email Cindy Gepsison, your Placer County supervisor, and tell her that Placer County should opt out. They've heard loud and clear, among other things, that folks in North Lake Tahoe are not supportive of that increase in building height. Um, and some of the other proposals from the TRPA. So let's go a different let's go a different route in Placer County. Let's really take a thoughtful approach and look at incentives that will work specific to this community. Then you can also attend the TRPA Regional Planning Committee meeting next week. It's on Wednesday. It will start no earlier than 12.45 p.m. And you can attend in person or via Zoom and you can make comment on these Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments. Um, you are limited to three minutes of comment, which is hard to talk about a lot of topics in three minutes, but maybe pick one thing that really speaks to you and, and talk about that. You can also submit written comments in advance of the hearing to public comment at trpa.gov. Um, and that is your second to last opportunity to weigh in on the Tahoe Basin Area Plan amendments. They're going to this meeting next week, and there will be one more meeting at the TRPA in February, and then this is done and dusted. That's the end of this, this proposal. So, um, it's a really critical time to get involved if this is important to you, if it speaks to you. And again, this does have the ability to change the way that North Lake Tahoe looks and feels and functions in the future. So it's important to get it right. And with that, there is the meeting information. You can also go to our website, www.mountainareapreservation.org slash Tahoe basin area plan. Um, for more information, we've got lots of info there, lots of old, um, comment letters that we've submitted. There are 
are some, you know, there's meeting information, lots of good resources there. So if you want to take a look, it's, it's a great place to find out more. And we'd also like to open it up for questions. So again, a reminder, if you do have a question, please raise your hand. We will call on you um, and you can unmute yourself and ask questions and, and hopefully have a discussion here today. And honestly, no question is a stupid question. This stuff is really complicated. And even when we try to make it simple, it sounds complicated as I'm saying it. So any, any questions are welcome. Since there's no questions, I'm just going to bring up a, a couple of things that I think are are important. You know, we, we often have residents and visitors and some MAP members say, how effective is it to send in letters, to send in comments? It is. It's effective because what what some community members don't realize is it's it's it is the the accumulation of those public comments. So the more people who address concerns with wildfire evacuation and safety, the more helpful it is to organizations like MAP or North Tahoe Preservation Alliance or you know any organization that is advocating for a better land use outcome. Your public comments and your letters, even if it's one item, is significant. So I've 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 been asked this um, many times over many years. People saying, "Does it matter? Does it matter if I send in my letter? Does it matter if I make a, a public comment on the Zoom?" It absolutely does matter. It makes a positive impact because it continues to illustrate to decision makers that we haven't gotten it right that we haven't addressed the issue, that we haven't looked innovatively or creatively at our housing crisis. And so even if it's a simple comment, a question, a concern, a complaint, it makes a difference. And so if you've ever been questioning whether or not to send in that letter or send that email to Cindy, you absolutely should. It makes a difference. So that's just my one plug while we're still waiting to see if anybody has any questions, because of course we would love to answer something. All right, we've got Jennifer. She has a question. Go ahead and unmute Jennifer. Hi, Um. so it's is does the Tahoe Regional Planning, what is it, AMIT Association, whatever, TRPA, does, does it operate this, does this plan operate the same way that the Truckee 2040 plan operated, are they required, if you write in questions, are they required to answer those questions by law? You're muted. Sorry about that. So Jennifer, you are specifically asking about the requirement to respond to questions when an environmental document has been released. And so at this point, there, you know, for, the for problem, people, people. Well, the, the problem is, is that for TRPA, they did an environmental checklist. So that doesn't have the same types of requirements that an EIR or, or an environmental impact statement or an environmental impact report would have. The same thing with a mitigated negative declaration and MND, there's a requirement to respond because they did addendums, there was no legal requirement to respond to the questions posed in public comments. Great, thank you. I don't know if Doug can hear me, but Doug Flaherty is with TahoeCleanAir.org, and he's one of the, um, they're one of the litigants on the Tahoe Basin Area Plan. I was wondering if you might want to weigh in, just give a 30-second overview on why you're litigating and what your perspective is on that. Well, first of all, let me just say you guys are so professional, and to be congratulated, uh, not just your website, but this <clears throat> lunch hour educational period, and I would encourage you to continue to do that. There's, I was just thinking this morning, there's no outlet for people to come and get a um, 
more objective perspective of what's going on. There's nothing. So, you know, <laughs> kudos to you guys. Keep it up. Um, the other thing I want to mention just briefly is our lawsuit is very simple. It's, it's what Alexis uh, said earlier. Um, we're not arguing housing amendments. It's, it's basically requiring Placer County to do a new or uh, addendum EIR. That's it. Um, whether or not they're complying with CEQA. So we figure, you know, if we can get that done, of course, when they do do, if they do do an addendum um, and, and we don't like it, we're going to have to come back and file another lawsuit. But this is just uh, just a beginning. And this is going to take a while. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. And Placer County is not bound to halt their uh, review of any any uh, permits. So that's kind of a quick overview. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate it. Just wanted to, you know, hear from you guys what what that was all about. But um, like you mentioned, the importance of having adequate review, environmental review under the California Environmental Quality Act is really understanding what mitigation measures might be put in place to offset and, and minimize the impacts. And so it is really important to look at what the impacts are and ways that we can um, reduce those impacts as much as possible. So a, a key consideration here. Any other questions? And, and two, you know, I know today's focus was the Tahoe Basin Area Plan. Um, our last one was on the TRPA housing code amendments, uh, the phase two housing code amendments. But if there are any questions because of the overlap or how these uh, jurisdictions interplay with each other, we're happy to answer that or address that um, because it is complicated. Amy, I see you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I haven't looked into it. What? So the um, TBAP amendments were approved by Placer County. Now they're going to TRPA. I'm a little confused about what that hearing next week is for, which might be helpful to know how best to respond to it. Yeah, so because um, it's an area plan, the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency has sort of final oversight or final approval of any of the um, local counties area plans. And so you're right, it did go through the Placer County process. It's been approved by the Placer County um, Board of Supervisors, and then it has to go through a three-step TRPA approval process. So the first step is to go to their advisory planning commission, which makes a recommendation. Um, and that actually happened in December, I believe it was December or November, um, but they went through and they recommended approval. And so now it goes to the regional planning committee um, and they kind of review again, and they also make a recommendation to the TRPA's governing board. And then the governing board makes a final approval to officially adopt the area plan amendments or to um, postpone for more analysis or provide direction in a different way. Thank you. So they can't actually act on the amendments yet. They can't approve plans based on the amendments yet, unlike the TRPA phase two housing amendments where they can approve projects based on those at this time. Yeah, so the TRPA phase two housing amendments that has all been approved, that's done and dusted official, but there is a 60 day period where local jurisdictions have the opportunity to either opt in to those amendments and say, yes, we're gonna follow what the TRPA um, approved, or we're going to find a different way to meet the goals of those housing amendments. And the goal essentially was to incentivize again, more of that affordable, moderate or achievable housing. And so if a local jurisdiction can show other ways that they're supporting those housing types, either through local programs, like a um, lease to locals program or um, a housing assistance program, a rental housing assistance program, or by donating land. And those are just a couple of examples. There's a lots of ways that a local jurisdiction can show that they're helping to meet those goals. Um, then they can choose to opt out of the amendments. And so Placer County in particular is already doing a number of those things. They've got some of those programs going. They are working on a, a big housing project, the Dollar Creek Crossing housing project where they've donated land. It's a, a county 
the county housing project. So they have a lot of examples of ways that they're already helping to meet the intent of the TRPA's amendments. So they could theoretically choose to opt out and they have 60 days to do that. So I think that that puts us at the end, kind of middle end of February um, to officially decide whether they're going to opt in or opt out. And we don't know a whole lot about that process. Unfortunately, it hasn't been very transparent. Um, but that's why we encourage everyone to email Cindy Gustafson and say, hey, Placer County doesn't have to do what the TRPA recommended. Placer County can choose a, a path that is more in line with um, the vision that Placer County residents have. Sorry, does that answer your question? It's a little bit of a tangent. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. And I, I think just to piggyback a bit of what um, I know a part of what sort of Amy is bringing up is, you know, what types of projects are already looking to benefit, right, from these amendments? Because we've already seen some of them, you know, the Chalet Blanc in Tahoe City, they have a proposal for 65 feet, and it's achievable housing, you know, that's what we know. So, you know, while while Placer County has stated in their own process, no, we're maintaining the 56 feet, we're already aware of developers bringing forward projects for 65 feet in not only Tahoe City and Kings Beach. And so it only helps to bring forward the, really, I we believe the intention that Placer County would not be opting out and that they would be uh, adopting the TRPA housing code amendments, which makes it very critical for people to email Cindy and say, no, you need to opt out. You know, your staff led the community through a year long process saying we're not going to do the heights, yet we are very aware of very specific project uh, applications, 39 degrees north, Chalet Blanc, that want to be afforded the height amendments. And so this is really one of the critical calls to action is letting Cindy know um, that this community, the North Lake Tahoe community does not support the 65 foot tall heights and that we can address workforce housing through new development without that type of height. There are ways, there are creative ways to build and develop without sacrificing our view sheds and our, our scenic thresholds in Tahoe. But we need uh, we need the community to keep coming forward and saying opt out opt out um and 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 really make that clear to our district 5 supervisor and the TRPA governing board member Cindy that this is not appropriate for North Lake Tahoe and it has not been analyzed which is the big legal concern and the legal issue is is no analysis no new analysis and the justification that there are no significant impacts is a critical component of our advocacy right now Still time for other questions if anyone has any. I did want to just briefly note that we'll be sending a follow-up email um, with a survey just to, like we've mentioned, this is a new program. So we're really trying to kind of ramp it up and learn, um, you know, just learn something at the end of this. Was this helpful? Was it interesting? Did you learn something new? Um, are there other topics that you would like us to kind of focus on in the future? Our first two were about two very specific planning processes, but we could look at specific projects or we could um, even dissect a, what is the California Environmental Quality Act or, um, you know, how does an area plan get adopted? Just sort of bigger, broader planning questions. So anything that you have, if this um, land use lunch hour sparked a question that's kind of a more general, you know, idea for the future, we're really open to that and would love to kind of help our community speak land use. This stuff is complicated. It's um, tough to digest. So we're, we're really trying to break it down as much as we can and would love your suggestions. So stay tuned and please look for that email after the fact. And that email will also have a link to the recording. So if you do wanna share this around, um, we would encourage that as well. And I think if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and call it a day 10 minutes early. And again, just thanks for your participation. Thanks for coming to learn something about the, the TBAF, the Tahoe Basin Area Plan Amendments. I tried not to use that acronym as much as possible because um, we're just an acronym-focused, acronym-heavy uh, 
field here. So try to try to cut that out if we can. But again, just thank you for coming. Um, if you have any additional questions that come up after the fact, please shoot an email to one of us. We're happy to answer questions, happy to jump on the phone even and just kind of have a more organic conversation. Um, and again, just appreciate your attendance and, and time today. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thanks so much. Thank you.